Ibulise kube fundisi bala pekaya, the leadership and the entire community of Bethesda Methodist Mission, everyone else joining us for our time of worship this morning. Do allow me to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We join for our worship again this Sunday, which is the first Sunday that comes after Pentecost. A Sunday also that is the first one in the month of June, where we commemorate the lives of young people, both within our community and in the country at large. And as we join together in worship, we receive our call to worship. your questions come with your weariness for the God who knows us meets us in this place come with your energy come with your weariness for the God who knows meets us in this place come with your joys and come with your sadness for the God who dared to become humanity meets us in this place and so we light our candle also as we begin as a sign and as a symbol that God is with us we bring before God our country with the numbers of the infections escalating numerously every day some people still not well some people are dying and many people are anxious in and across our world, the cries of black people against injustices are echoing louder and louder. We also bring before God the livelihood of our children, asking for their protection, even as they prepare to go back to school. And so we begin our service by singing together from our Kosa Hymnal number 18. Tiko lilanga letu ya kanya pezu wetu. Mpefumlo ngabona apo uambela kona Kosa 18. God of our fathers and mothers, 
God of all generations, we have come before you. We gather in your presence on this morning of our youth month to praise and give thanksgiving to your faithful love towards us for the many ways that you have demonstrated your love for us. Thank you for your faithful presence among us, even when we are not aware of it. We especially want to thank you that in your wisdom, you call the small and help them do great things, that you call the weak and reveal their hidden talents, and that you invite the rejected and open their eyes to their worth. Continue to reveal yourself to us. Open our eyes to see you here amongst us. Open our ears so we may hear your word. For surely you are with us in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. be reading Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to verse 5 the story of creation in the beginning when God created the universe the earth was formless and bleak the raging ocean that covered everything was buried in total darkness and the Spirit of God was moving over the water then God commanded let there be light and light appeared God was pleased with what he saw. He separated light from darkness and named light day and darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. That was the first day. Thanks be to God. Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20. Jesus appears to his disciples. The eleven disciples went to the hall in Galilee where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have given you all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey every command I have taught you and I'll be with you always and to the end of time. Thanks be to God.
Last week, we celebrated the birth of the church at Pentecost through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The first Sunday into the Pentecost season, therefore, is Trinity Sunday. For indeed, the promise of the Holy Spirit has been fulfilled. And so we now comprehend with a God who is in three forms, yet one. So we took two readings when we started our service. One from the book of Creations in Genesis chapter 1 and the other from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 28. Now if you read the Gospel of Matthew, when it begins it in the earlier chapters, you understand that Matthew begins his Gospel by writing on the genealogy of Jesus Christ as the son of David, born as Emmanuel, God with us. And in its ending, Matthew is very forward-looking with the same promise that he started with, a God with us. And therefore, in the chapter that we have read from in 28, it is at the instruction of Jesus Christ upon resurrection that the 11 surviving disciples meet Jesus on an unnamed mountain in Galilee. Yes, as we are told, some of them worshipped him, while some remained doubtful, because there are times where we find we have strength, we have faith, we have all what it takes to worship and to get deeper and deeper into our worship, and there are times when we're confronted with the realities and situations of our lives that we find ourselves very much doubtful. I mean, on one hand, there comes a time where our spiritualities seem to be merely means to help people forget and escape certain realities of their lives. While on the other hand, we find that hopelessness is embedded in our prayers because people are confronted by their situations and their realities to a point that they see nothing beyond that. And so we begin to ask ourselves, how should we understand and comprehend and how should our attitudes towards Trinity be today as the disciples were probably asking themselves standing on that mountain? I mean, how are we to make sense of Trinity when there's so much disease, so much destruction, and so much death happening around us? How are we to make sense of a Trinity when the realities of pain and the realities of suffering become too obvious for us each and every day? How are we to make sense of a God who is in three forms, yet one, when there seems to be so much segregation in and across the entire world, black people suppressed by white domination. How are we to understand Trinity? That is the question we ask ourselves today. And so remember, in the earlier chapters of this gospel, Jesus Christ had called his disciples at the start of his ministry on earth. And in calling his disciples as he met them in the various locations that he had met them, he said to them, come, follow me. And they indeed followed Jesus Christ, not knowing where they were following him to, not knowing what following him entailed, and not knowing what following him will lend themselves to. They followed the call that Jesus Christ was giving unto them. And that call was merely to bring light into the darkness of the world. In other Gospels, Kutua, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But in essence, he had called them to follow. And now, when Jesus Christ is ending his ministry on earth in his humanity, as he stands on this mountain top, he says to them, go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, understanding that I am with you always. And so the key word in all that Jesus Christ is saying now, as he had called them in the beginning, he is now sending them and he says to them, go. Now the word go brings a sense of actually getting up, a sense of movement, and it is a word that calls us to do something, to be ahead, because there is no way you go, there is no way you can go, actually stagnant, there is no way you go, when you go, you move towards a certain direction. And as you move towards a certain direction, there's a certain act that is taking place. And so we go and we are sent to all nations, even in the time and even in the context, even in the midst of so much that we are. When we are called to go, when we are sent to go, we are actually challenged into being active collaborators with God for the transformation of the world. Therefore, there is no term and there is no way that we would be called to go to a certain group or to go to a certain particular people, but we are called to go to all nations. It may be that we are called to go and make disciples of black people. It may be that we are called to go and make disciples of white people. It may be that we are called to go and make disciples of the younger people. It may be that we are called to go and make disciples of elderly people. It may be that we are called to go and make disciples of people who are of different sexualities as us. It may be that we are called to go and make disciples of people who are of different cultures to us, people who are of different beliefs and of people who are of different race to us. But go to all nations and make disciples when you get there. Indeed, we are called to go to a fragmented world. We are called to go with fragmented faiths. We are called to go with fragmented understanding of this same God. But as we go into that world, see how and therefore go to all nations. Secondly, secondly, we go to make disciples. That's the commission that is given to the disciples as they stand. Go and make disciples. You know, it is through the incarnation of God that God became a part with humanity so that humanity can become a part in God's communal life. For our attitudes, there's, 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 okay. Secondly, secondly, it is, secondly, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. For it is through the incarnation of God that God becomes a part with humanity so that humanity can become part with God's communion life. Thus, our attitudes, therefore, should be that our God is not a God who is further and further away, but our God is certainly a God who has an undistractable unity with all humanity and all creation for that matter. Therefore, a call to discipleship gets us started into understanding that at the heart of discipleship is the proclamation of Jesus Christ. And because Jesus Christ in his mission on earth is a Jesus Christ 
who is very revolutionary and therefore being called into discipleship is being called into a revolutionary movement. Therefore the work of discipleship is and of itself revolutionary in nature. We are asked to be those disciples and to call people into discipleship. People who will not just remain stagnant in their comfort zones, but people who won't be comfortable with the flow of the status quo. People who will change things to fit the agenda of the will of God. People who will make this world change and transform to be what God indeed wanted us to be. That is what discipleship is about. Because the book of Genesis says we were created in the image of God. We were taught what Jesus Christ did and therefore we ought to do. I humble a new Jesus Christ. In the life of the Trinity, we then become and we then make disciples. We live such a life for the transformation and for the change of the world so that God's creation can be what Jesus Christ and what God wanted it to be. I will start. No go Go. Go. Knowing that I am with you always. Go, knowing that I am with you always. A reminder that as we go out there to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Spirit, and then in the name of the Son, whatever the cost it will be, God remains with us. God, we are in communion with God who is in Trinity. That is why in the book of Genesis, as we had read, the narrator is very clear in telling us that it was in the chaotic darkness that the Spirit of God was hovering over. And this was at the beginning. When a new season is coming to the fore, it is in the light of God of God that things come to be. God is with us. The same God that was there hovering over the spirit is the same God that is there hovering over all the darkness. It is the same God that is here hovering over so much uncertainty that is there. It is when God is with us always till the end of the ages. And so we go knowing with great confidence that even in our sunsetanity, we go, what will transpire of this level three lockdown? But sisters in Dogobana, we go participating in the life of the Trinity, the life that gives life where there is no life. Even in the midst of conversations, in the midst of ways and means that enable young people and children to resume their academic life, we go knowing that we are participating in the Trinity, the life which gives life where there is no life. Even when systems of injustice seem to start there enduring, we go simply understanding that we are already participating in the life of the Trinity, the life that gives hope where there is no hope. And therefore we go, we move, we engage, we participate in that life, knowing very well that God is with us 
in every step and in every way and in every movement that we are making because God is with us. Maguti ke noba kubuke ga ngati kumnyama. Maguti noba kubuke ga ngata kwa sombululo. Maguti noba kubuke ga ngata kwa seki toko kwa na kwenze kantoni na. Maguti noba kubuke ga ngati it is all bleak with death over us. But sila sazi toko kwa na God who is three in one is the God who is with us. The God ateta nga yuma dey kai siti. Gu imanyuel utiko nanti that is the same God that Jesus Christ is speaking about as he commissions the disciples on this mountain Galilee. the same God that we are reminded about even in our context in time the same God that was there the same God He's got the whole world in his hand. And therefore, in the midst of young Kenyans, in the midst of therefore, do not despair, do not lose hope, remain trustful and faithful in that God who is with us. As we go into the world, whatever the world brings for us, and as I close, allow me to ask this question. Us, being a church, because we've spoken so much, we've analyzed, we've reflected so much on what it means to be a church. And therefore, being that church, what would you say is our legacy today receiving this commission to go and make disciples because it is very easy and it is very easy for for churches to want to own and have exclusivity and and have that sense of ownership of god to a point that singapore me out there but we remain in our places zikani and it is for us to go, to go. So now fall into the same trap that the Israelites had fallen into, wanting to have some form of ownership of the God. That text, as is Fundileo today, they urge us to play our role. They are urging me to play my role for you to play your role in the manifestation of the continued presence of God in where you are, in your family, in your workplace, in your community, and in the nation as a whole. What role, therefore, are you playing in this commission that God has given here and today? Remember, as we are commissioned, the commission is in the where to be a discipleship movement is a commission that needs or that challenges us to work and to act together for the development of life as God wills for us. And as we are commissioned to work together and as we are commissioned to be in community with one another, we then need to think together, we then need to act together, we then need to build a life together, a life that will indeed Bring certainty around the world. And therefore we live in obedience to that commission. God has never left us. God has never forsaken us. And may God be with you. May God be with our country. May God be with our leadership as a whole. Be it political. Be it in our government be it in our workplaces, be it in our homes, be it in our individual spaces. May God carry us through. May his light shine upon us. And may that life of the Trinity that we are called to participate in, indeed, empower us such that we move away from the moment of Pentecost. We move away from that mountain in Galilee, going out there, 
no kwenza kwethu uvezi ubuthixo ngathi ngo Kristu nkosi yethu amen and so i thank everyone for joining us for our time of worship this morning do join us again next week and the same time the same platform as we continue worshiping god i do remind and encourage us that we continue to give to god as a form of worship using the electronic mediums that will be communicated after this service and also encourage that we continue to pray for each other continue to support each other in the best ways that we can some have lost their loved ones in our community and some are not well physically and otherwise so let us continue to mention each other in prayer when we do so thank you and so we leave this place of worship while so much of the road ahead is uncertain we go knowing that god is love that christ's life endures we go knowing that the holy spirit is here the holy spirit is there the holy spirit is everywhere even closer than our next breath binding us to each other until we meet again let us receive our benediction may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.